Okay, tonight we're talking about relational division. Um, I guess we should start with a, a quick description, a quick uh, definition of relational multiplication. And that's, um, like, cross joins are relational, are set multiplication. You know, with cross joins, you, t you start with, um, you know, a table full of data. You, get, you have another table full of data, cross join, you multiply them. You wind up with, you know, if there's X rows in the first table and Y rows in the second table, you, you join them together, you get X times Y rows. So very clearly, it's multiplication. Um, what I want to talk about tonight, the multiplication may wind up being a different um, video, but tonight I want to talk about um, relation, relational, sorry, I can't say it, relational division. Um, which is basically dividing out some data using another set of data. It's not just restricting it, it's, it's actually dividing it out. So kind of like uh, one in every three queries ends in divorce. Yeah, well, yeah sure. Um, yeah, there, there, there are much better um, definitions out there, but tonight I just want to go through and show what I did you know, in the process of figuring this out for myself. So. Um, yeah, I've got my notes up here. You can see um, I'm actually studying the SQL Server 05 Bible. It's what got me started. Um, now, relational division with a, a remainder is a little bit less specific um, and more useful, generally speaking. So, like... Um, a remainder. Well, we'll get into that. Exact relational division, you say, for example, okay, who has done X but absolutely nothing else? You know, who has bought, in my example, Skin So Soft products but nothing else? That can be useful, but, you know, you may also be interested in anybody who's brought, bought uh, uh, Skin So Soft products and the other things that they've purchased as well. And that's relational division with remainders, you know, this, this defined criteria and, and other stuff too. Um, so, so, so what you're trying to say is like somebody buys a product line, right? Um, uh, Swedish penal enlargers. <laughs> sure, Swedish penal enlargers. Swedish, Swedish. <laughs> um, and uh, you know that would be the first part. But the one with remainders, what's the one without remainders? Without remainders is, is the exact relational okay, so, um, division. So exact relational division would be anybody that bought... Only the, bought the penis enlarger, yes. Penis enlarger. yes. And uh, the one with the remainder would be those who bought the penis enlargers. And, and some sort of healing order. cream or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> so uh, other <laughs> other things in the order, too. Um, so so I was thinking about that. So we're, we're using... <laughs> yeah, sure. We're using my uh, my Avon database here. I, I built this with my own two hands, and uh, because it's it's data I'm familiar with, um, and uh, so I started out. If we just wanted the order, and in my database you've got customer and order ID pairs that that forms an order, right? Um, so first, if you just want the ones that include uh, Skin So Soft SSS products, easy. Uh, select customer order uh, customer ID and order ID where description like SSS, easy, and then a group by. So here are our orders where somebody bought at least one Skin So Soft product. This is our... Um, but that's not only. No, that's not only. This right. is our. This is the first step. Now we're gonna right. we're gonna stick with this for a minute and make it a little bit more complicated because we don't want to just show the orders. We want to show the whole. Uh, sorry, just show um, the order ID. We want to show everything that was in that order. So we'll go ahead and stick with this. Uh, what, is, what do we call it? Uh, relational division with remainders, and just make it a little bit more complicated too. Um, oh yeah, if you if you just wanted to show every every order, uh, every skin so soft that was purchased, that's something else as well. But right now we're going for... Okay, so you start with the subquery um, right in here, uh, where you're selecting, like I said, the, the order and customer number, uh, where description like skin so soft. That, but that's, that's your, that's your subquery. You're going to use that up here. Um, let's see, I think I, I complicated this out. Okay, so we've aliased this subquery as orders, and we can match um, all of the order number and customer numbers uh, that are, are Skin So Soft products and get everything else in that order by saying, okay, orders, order num, we're going to join that. Um, so, you know, we've got this subquery, we, we're using it as a table, essentially. You understand? No. Okay. Um, 
you can do a subquery in a couple different ways, right? You can subquery for just a value. This is a set of values. It returns a table. Right. Okay. So we've aliased that table as orders. So now we can just join on orders like we would every, anything else. So here we've got um, orders dot order number is equal to our main table up here o dot order number and that's what allows you to get back um, all of the rows that include in, in a cat in a, in a um, uh, what am I trying to say uh, all of the rows in a customer order when that order also includes a skin soft product so it's a correlated subquery of sorts Oops. It's not a correlated subquery necessarily because there's you can run um, well, right there you're correlating it with the uh, outside query. No, you're joining it. There's no correlation because there's nothing in this subquery that depends on the superquery. In other words, this is something that you can run uh, independently just by itself. I see. I see. I see. I see. So okay. no, it's not correlated. Okay. Um, very nice. Okay. Good. We've but we've joined on it for a girl. Yeah, for a girl. But we've joined on it, and uh, we can get back. I'm trying to highlight the whole thing. Um, it's not working. There we go. And I've got some extra information. I went ahead and, and joined on a couple of other tables to get the customer's name, the customer category. I tell how often, and I've I've just put their <laughs> just put their names out there. Yay! But anyway, so so cool. We've managed to get back. Um, here's one lady in her order. She ordered one thing um, that skin so soft, and then a couple other random things. Right. So that was our. Um, I gotta go back up and look. I keep losing my words. Our relational division with remainders because these per people ordered other things too. Okay, no, let's go back to that for a minute. Yeah. Um, no, back to it. There back you to go. it. Um, <clears throat> how do you know? Okay, how, how do you know that you need to join on a query? I mean, how do you figure out that a query is that joining on a, on a query and returning? that query like that is what you need to do. I mean, how do I figure out? Because I'm sitting here going, okay, okay, I I need to, I've got this assignment, I need to, I need to create this data that you just created. Sure. And the first thing that comes to mind is using nine or twelve temp tables to hold different things. Yeah, and, sure. You know, so, so how, how do you figure, I mean, how do you reason that out, that, that that's what's going to be necessary? Well, it's, it, this kind of shows my th thought process right here. This is exactly what I wrote um, last night and just thinking out loud to myself. So basically you just start thinking of, okay, what do I, what is the question at hand? The question at hand um, starts with who ordered SSS? Um, products. Well, we can get that with a select star from orders, uh, order, sorry, it's a keyword, That's okay. Um, okay. Uh, where description equal is like, huh, sorry, SSS. So, kind of a little pseudocode. Yeah, you've, you've got to start, uh, I, this is how I do it, I start with pseudocode. I said, okay, that's, that's for starters. Um, easy enough. I want to know what else they got. Um, well, I don't, I don't like doing a lot of ten, temp tables and that kind of thing. And of course, you know, today I'm studying subqueries, so I like subqueries. And in the future when I'm studying temp tables again, then I'm going to go and the temp tables are your best friends. You're going to use them all the time. Um, so, so first you find um, all of your rows with Sinsosoft. Okay, great. And I, I actually set it up here. So the next step is to find all the order numbers customer ID pairs with SkinSoSoft in them because that's going to give me you know that's how I'm going to access those other orders so okay um, let's select um, okay, no, 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 say that again I say that um, just just selecting the rows with SkinSoSoft in them doesn't tell us anything we're specifically going off of what's the primary key the uh, order number order ID and uh, the customer ID uh, and if we can get a list of order IDs and customer IDs then we can join off of that to access um, all of the all of the rows for each each order that contains the skin so soft um, it's it is a temp table only without the temp table because y it, right. you're creating a new table essentially you're creating a new result set I should say with this subquery and you're joining off of it. Okay, I hope I hope that's all 
clear as mud, but we're gonna we're gonna move on. Um, the Says you. yeah, no kidding. Relation exact relational division. You know who has done something but absolutely nothing else. Who has ordered SSS products and nothing else in that order uh, is the next question that we're gonna tackle. Because sometimes you want to get really specific. Okay, so here I've taken the the same query we just used. Here's our our nice subquery where we're joining, um, and I've taken out some of the extra information, the customer name and their category and all that stuff, because it's just it, it was just for you know extra information. Um, we're going to start here, and we're going to say that the subquery is too broad. And again, here we're following my my thought process from last night working it out. Okay, the, the subquery is too broad. We want to start with just the SkinSoft stuff and then it, it came to me a revelation. I actually wrote, ooh, uh, and count the rows in the order. Um, that, that was where I got, that, that was where I was inspired to say, oh, okay, the way I'm going to realize that a, an order only contains skin so soft is if when I do that join, I've counted the number of, of skin so softs in an order and I've counted the number of rows in an order and they match. So we're going to start with select uh, count and order number and customer ID where um, it's skin so soft. And yay, okay, great, we've got our count. Uh, let me scooch down. Okay, so uh, we've got 15 rows with uh, 15 orders with uh, at least one skin so soft in it. And by the way, we should note that if there's only one row in an order um, in this query, then that counts. You know, we only there's only one order with skin so soft or one one row with skin so soft in this order. Then that's all they ordered was the skin so soft. No. But anyway, that's just a sort of a side note. Even I know that. Even you know that. Uh, so for each of the above pairs, we need to compare um, against a, a row count. So here's here's just a row count um, grouped by order number and customer ID for the entire table. Um, so great. We've got the row count for the entire table. We've got the row count for Skin so Soft products. We join them to compare them. And we get our results set. So um, here is our subquery where we're, we're getting the rows uh, for uh, skin so soft products. And down here, and I've uh, aliased that as SSS list. Sure. Um, and down here we join fullest order num should match um, the skin so soft order num and the customer ID should match. We're going to group by order num and customer ID and skin so soft count. Uh, having the full list count should match the SSS count. And we've only got two orders where all the person ordered was Skin So Soft products. Yeah, and I, I, I got my little I did it down here. I was quite proud of myself. I had a real booger of a time. Um, you said booger. Yeah, I said booger. Okay, so b b before you go on, yeah, go ahead. Uh, explain that, that syntax one more time. Because sure. I'm um, I'm looking at it, and you know your brain is just too big for me. <laughs> okay, so we've got our subquery. Um, where all it's we're the doing. Same one you worked out above. It's the same one we worked out above. Where yeah, all we're doing. Grouping by. Were you grouping by above? Yeah, we were grouping by above because. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, there it is. There you go. Uh, right here. Okay. So why do you need to group? Well, you're um, you're getting all of the. Um, order number customer so basically all of the orders that uh, uh, that include a skin so soft product and the number of rows in that order so here's your here's your aggregate um, portion you're gonna have to group by everything else yeah okay see the simple answer is yeah. well, because you have to <laughs> because we have to yeah well I didn't want to say that make it look dumb or anything uh, so yeah and and this out here is um, is just is the same same thing as above, uh, where we just got um, the count for the entire table. But now we've just put a subquery in and done a couple other things. Okay, so, so I don't see the count though. It's down having a count of. Oh, well, you said it was the same thing as above. Well, it was not. close, you know. Um, so we've uh, we've got our. So selecting that and that from full list, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, from orders full list, and then you're joining. On, on the subquery, subquery, which, which is a row count is a row of count all, yeah, 
uh, account as is an order num customer ID. Okay. Uh, from the word descriptions like that and group by order num customer ID. Okay, looks works for me. Okay, and so that is that. And then on full list right. order num equals SSIS. SS, SSS list. See, I do it with so much SSIS. S. I always go SSIS. We'll call it the S list. The S list. <laughs> The full list and the list. Yeah, yeah, the and the customer ID equals okay. Mm -hmm. And then you're grouping by. We're uh, grouping by everything in our select list up here, uh, order number and customer ID. Sure. We are also grouping on SSS. I'm sorry, SLIST uh, count. <laughs> <laughs> Which, They're just a dork. Yeah. Well, I had uh, this is what I was going to say is I had a real bugger of a time. Figuring out, I said, uh, you know, okay, I, I'm here in my subquery, I've got my count, how do I get that out here and compare the full list count to the list count? Um, um, you have to gr you you have to have an alias in your subquery for the count. You have to include uh, that um, in the um, in the group by. I'm stumbling here. Because this is something that's going to be used, um, it's going to be uh, different for every row. In other words, you know, uh, the count for order number one, customer ID one, is going to be one thing. And for order number two and customer ID two is going to be another thing. So it has to be included in the group by list, even if you don't list it up here in the select. Is it making sense? You made my brain hurt. I'm sorry. Well, it, it, it's like if you've got, um, you know, just a simple... Um, count. Okay, fine. <laughs> no, that's count. I can't spell U-N-T. Select count star from uh, order. Okay, that's all. But what we want is, you know, per, for example, uh, order, we'll stick with the same thing, order num and customer ID. You have to have a group by clause. Right. Um, because we're saying, okay, this order number, this customer ID has this row count. Well, now you're adding something. You're saying, that um, this order number and this customer ID had a SkinSoft count of whatever. And of course, this isn't going to work because there's no such function. But uh, I'm kind of translating here. So you've got um, a different SkinSoft count returned by the subquery for every row, for every order number and customer ID. Well, of course, you're going to have to include it in the group by, and that's where I was I was getting tripped up yesterday, is I didn't. I see. Okay, let me see this. Go ahead. Okay, um, I guess I have to use this, huh? I can't really yeah, yeah, go ahead. I can't really point it. <laughs> so you've got, you've got these two columns right here. Ah, there we go. You've got these two columns right here, but you also have them up here as well. So how come you're not getting an ambiguous column, uh, error message in here since these aren't being qualified with the order. Well, remember that it doesn't necessarily matter what's in your select list. You could put absolutely anything up there and the query, the, the logic of the query doesn't really depend on it. Um, what's important is what you're joining on and in this case what's in your having clause. Um, you're joining the full list order number to this list order number and full list customer ID to, to list customer ID. There's not going to be anything ambiguous about what's returned because um, you're, you're joining on them and it doesn't matter what's in your select list. I mean, it matters in the sense of, you know, that's the data that's being returned. Yeah, sure. But the logic of what's being returned doesn't depend on what's in your select list. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for me for relational division. Um, I, I may put together a little tiny something on relational multiplication um, in the near future, but uh, we'll see. So that's all I got.